Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our Bible study. Today, we'll be reading Genesis chapter 12 and 13 as you grab your Bibles and get them open, a couple of notes. Our goal is to show you that you can resurrect that time-honored tradition of sitting around, reading the Bible, and then talking about it. Along the way, we would like to equip you for the road ahead with some of the lessons that the Bible has taught us about life and that life has taught us about the Bible. You know, I could probably read that line a little bit better if it wasn't a run-on sentence. I might have to do something about that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you can be a part of what we're doing. Go forth where you're at, make disciples, and be in your own Bible study. Pray for us when you can, and be in fellowship with us. Like, share, subscribe, comment, ask questions. We would love to get them. Once again, like we did for the book of John, after the book of Genesis, we'll do a Q&A. All right, gentlemen, Genesis 12 and 13, who's first? I'm first. My name is Greg. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Excuse me. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go into the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abraham, Abram <laughs> passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said to, him, and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed going on toward the south. <clears throat> I'm Lowell, and I'll be reading from the New American Standard Translation, verse 10 to the end of chapter 12. Now there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, where the famine was severe in the land. It came about when he came near Egypt, that he said to Sarai, his wife, See now, I know that you are a beautiful woman, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you, and that I may live on account of you. It came about when Abram came into Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. Pharaoh's officials saw her and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Therefore, he treated Abram well for her sake and gave him sheep and oxen and donkeys and male and female servants and female donkeys and camels. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Now Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her for my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him that they escort him away with his wife and all that belonged to him. <clears throat> okay, I'm Mark, and I'm going to read uh, the first couple of verses of chapter 13. Um, I'm reading from the New King James translation, starting at verse 1. Then Abram went up from Egypt he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him to the south. 
Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. I'm Joshua. I'm reading uh, verse 10 through 18 of chapter 13. And I'm doing it out of the New American Standard Bible. <clears throat> Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the valley of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go to Zawar. So Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram set settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the valley and moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, I will give it to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if Anyone can number the dust of the earth, then your descendants can also be numbered. Arise, walk about the land through its length and breadth, for I will give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. Uh -huh. Well, there's a very frequent word in there. Altar. How many altars did you count? I think he he did three, but used one for a landmark and returned to it later. Hmm. Interesting. Meaning, uh, no, he he made there's two here, and he used two. He used the first one twice. Yeah, <laughs> and so. So I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, Greg just realized he was on mute after saying something rather pithy and important. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing that strikes me here as as we go from, you know, Tara and, and Abram's father and and um, the incompleted um, mission there, that God is beginning something that he had not done on this earth before. He is establishing a people for himself, an identifiable uh, community of people that he is putting his blessing on to such an extent that he they have promise and a future that is determined by God, which is just beyond comprehension, not only does he put a blessing on them, but a, a, um, an identifying with them to such an extent that anyone who curses them, he will curse. And conversely, anyone who blesses them, he will bless. Mm -hmm. This is something completely new. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not without, it's not an accident that this occurs after the scattering of the yeah. people. You know, it, you know, the time, sometimes the time period, it's pretty hard to figure out what the 
how many years it was since the tower and city of Babel. But it it's very interesting. Well, you're right. Not only does he say, I'm going to make you a great, I'm going to bless you. And uh, in all, and then the last uh, sentence, if you will, or half sentence at the end of verse three is, in you, all the families of the earth will yeah. shall be blessed. And so he now intends, he's, he's now gone on record, let's say it that way, that he intends to go back to the nations that he, he created with the intent that through this family and their progeny and what happens with them and their interaction with this God is going to be the blessing for the entire world. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I'm sometimes I ponder about how, how Abraham, I mean, what did he do with, with, with those thoughts? I mean, I, I would, it would boggle my mind. I, you know, I'd be, I'd get very, I wouldn't even know what first off what God was talking about, but then it would kind of kind of dawn on me. And is is he saying is he saying this? And you know, just it's it's incredible here. This is this the, the rest of the story is being written starting here. At the same time, Greg, you and I and everybody here are recipients of that promise. Amen. That's exactly right. That is astonishing. Yeah. Uh, if I can make a real quick delineation here. Uh, God says to Abraham, I will bless you and make your name great. Hold on. Time this out. Is... Abram. Abram. What did I say? Abraham. 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 So Abraham. Thank you. Thing. <laughs> Abram. It, this is directly the opposite of what was going on and building the thing in Babylon where they were going to make a name for themselves. Okay. There you go. God says, I will make, I will bless you and I will make your name great. Abram did not make a great name for himself. God made a great name for Abram. And as I'm going to point out later, Abram didn't start out with, you know, just a perfect record. Um, God <laughs> calls him, tells to go, him to go from his country and kindred. What does he go? He goes with Lot. What is Lot? His kindred, his family. Yeah. And in the next chapter, Lot becomes a lot of trouble. And it is not a story about how phenomenal Abraham is, Abram. It is so, but how phenomenal our God is, who has put his blessing upon us and our imperfection and brings to pass his promise. So, so we're, we're going to, we'll probably talk about that a little later down the road uh, when we find out about what happens with with lot um but we we see that they do separate here even in these two chapters <clears throat> but why do you think he took lot with him was lot of the same mind as abram and did he believe in the one and only god i, I mean it, it is odd that he he told him to um get out of your country from your family and yet he takes lot with him and well it's interesting the but, new testament refers to lot as righteous lot yes who was vexed by what's going on in sodom and gomorrah sorry josh so um, a little bit of family history is um abram is one of three boys yeah uh, lot is the grandson of um Abraham's dad. Sorry, I forgot what the guy's name is. Haram. Haram, yeah. So Lot had basically three choices. Stay with his dad. Don't know why he didn't. Go with Abram or go with his other uncle. We don't we don't see why he chose to do this or why Abram chose to bring him along either. Um mm -hmm. we can speculate, but this is such an action pill filled like section. It's, you know, it's like back when we read John chapter 19. There's so much action here. Yeah. What are, how are we going <laughs> to comment on? And then this happened. And then he did this. And then he said to do this. And then he did it. It's like, you know, we can speculate behind their mind stuff. But we do also have the second half of chapter 12, the deceit of Abram to the Egyptians, to the Pharaoh, too. So. Yeah. We're, yeah we're I, want gonna... to, I want to bring out verse 7. It's 
we're going to see this happen a lot. That's that's a pun there. Um, <laughs> We had to explain there will be a lot of puns on today's and next week's show. <laughs> yep, yep. So when, when the Lord appeared to him and then reconfirmed that, okay, what he, not reconfirmed, he says, I'm going to lead you to another country. Now he's there. He says to your descendants, literally to your seed, uh, I'm going to give you this land. And the thing that the response that he gave was to build an altar to the Lord. That's the response he gave mm -hmm. right there. And we're going to see that. And, you know, Lowell, like you mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of what we're seeing in this chapter is a juxtaposition to what occurred in the previous chapter. Yeah. yeah. One of the things, again, I think a lot of people miss is they focus on the tower of Babel, but they forget about the city of Babel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but so in opposite, in opposition to building a city for making a name for himself he's living a light life of the tent and the altar and you're going to see this pattern play out in, in his life in the life of his son isaac and in the life of his son Jacob. because I... yeah no and, go and, and later you know far later on in the book of hebrews we're going to see the spiritual reason why though it's never mentioned in the Old Testament, is he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God, mm -hmm. not him. So that back to that little thing you brought up. I think the reason that Abram took Lot along is because he didn't want God to build his kingdom on a vacant lot. Is this yeah. all, also a pun on the fact that he was 75 and had no children? So is this like a doubleheader pun? This is not me. Is this like the father of all puns? Get it? Oh, he's not Abraham yet. I'm sorry. I, I jumped the gun with that pun. You did. You did. <laughs> yeah, Greg, that's good. Sorry. About two weeks early to bring that one out. <laughs> yeah. And then, then these names that we see here are going to come up again and again. Shechem, uh, AI. Bethel, you know, his grandson is going to have a whole lot of stuff in Bethel happen to him. And so, so you know, it's, it's the storyline is now being built. The story is being built. Just like any good story, you introduce little elements, and then at later later on you bring up why it's happening in the story. So where literally in today's map are these areas? <laughs> uh Kind of to the the, right. the northwest and the west of Jerusalem. Okay, so he's still he's he's around the Jerusalem area, right? What what will become Jerusalem? Okay, that's why I was thinking. Um, yes, I think, and I think when he crosses over into uh, Egypt, uh, it speaks of uh, Zoar. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't, but I, I think that's a I think that's uh the part of Egypt that's um it's still east of the Nile, uh maybe the land yeah, of Goshen. Right. Yeah. Um so um get on my trusty maps. Here. I think Zoar is uh where I think Zoar is where Lot fled to, getting out of Sodom and Gomorrah, which means small. So it's I think this just, is this is God telling Moses a place that doesn't exist yet, or is not named that yet, but for reference of where it actually is. Interesting. If I'm right, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. And that's you know, I got three guys to point that out to me. Thank you. Yeah. And commentators, commenters. <laughs> it is interesting the trade route that it you know intuitively we would say Ab Abram and his wife took and Lot mm -hmm. was on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. They came down there up in, in, up north and past Damascus, up in Ur of the Chaldees. They're coming down on the east side of that, and then they cross over the River Jordan at some point 
and then mm -hmm. on the west side of Jordan, just north northeast of uh, the Jerusalem area, what would be the Jerusalem area? They're on a trade route. I'd like to focus in on God's call here. Mm -hmm. God places His call and attaches His promises to a man who is married to a barren wife and expands that promise to encompass a multitude of people that you can't even count. Mm -hmm. And Abram's response to it at first is just to leave where he is and to set out toward where God promises. Years later, God repeats the promise. We'll come to it in Genesis 15. And Abram's response to it is belief. Mm -hmm. And it is reckoned to him as righteousness. And um, there's there's a picture both of our physical response to God's call and then our belief response. Neither one is perfect. Mm -hmm. Neither one is perfect. He leaves with Lot. Later on, he believes God. The next thing he does is he goes into a scenario of trying to fulfill God's promise the wrong way. Yeah. Well, that that's is. Are you talking about Egypt? No, I'm talking about Hagar and that whole scenario. He's All jumping right, ahead let's, there. Let's, yeah, you're jumping way ahead. Let's talk about Egypt. <laughs> All right. So, which is which is kind of interesting because that, that's where I thought you were going to go with that because um, God made this promise. So what's the first thing he does when he, like, there's a drought, he gets into Egypt, he dumps his wife. <laughs> That's well, where I was going, yeah. actually, is we oh. have a perfect God with a perfect promise that is given to imperfect people. Yes. Absolutely. To demonstrate a perfect God. Yeah. Yes. His glory, not ours. Right. So he gets his promise, he leaves. Eventually, drought happens. He goes to Egypt. This this might have been the beginning of that trouble that ended up in Hagar, possibly speculation. I understand. Um, but he does, you know, he does say, All right, it's time for you, in so many words, time for you to be the Pharaoh's wife instead of mine. Because you're so beautiful. They might they might kill me. So save my life. Pretend to be my sister. Yeah. So a trick we will see again. Right. Right. So that that. OK, so that's that's good, Joshua, uh, because we seem to repeat errors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of errors. Yeah. Well, what do we want to say about Egypt now? Yeah, that's, that's one of the, the things well, we I think we can say um, <laughs> Pharaoh definitely blessed mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Abram. In spite of Abram's, uh, if you will, sinful behavior, the okay. Lord is true to his promise. And um, Pharaoh, he gives him, uh, he gives him gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, not only that, he he uh, sends him away <laughs> peaceably. I I, I think um, I think this is this is God's grace in Abram's life. Amen. On and, that note, it really strikes me uh, Pharaoh's character here. The Egyptians are sons of Ham, people of questionable moral character, and he recognizes the the curse that has come upon him because he has taken Sarai, and he has the moral character to say, "Why didn't you tell me that she was your wife?" and and he is upset because he has inadvertently committed something that is immoral that he implies he would not have done mm -hmm. and you know just uh, there's character in this pharaoh abram's assumption was wrong that 
they would see Sarai kill him and take her. These people had moral character than Abram thought they had. So, something I'd like to bring up really quick. Um, this is five generations, if I'm counting correctly, give or take a couple if I'm counting incorrectly, um, from the Tower of Babel. So it's only, it's not that long after. Um, so, something I've noticed in other parts of the Bible is like after Sodom and Gomorrah, um, there's the other episode of this happening. And that king was in terror. Because of this, because he thought he was going to get Sodom and Gomorrahized as well. So there's this after this this great judgment, people pay attention to God, pay attention to morals, and they listen. And then slowly the morals corrupt again, and slowly, and then another lesson needs to hit them, and then the the morals catch back up. Oh yeah, so, interesting. Greg, you're on mute, Greg. <laughs> Wanna, I just want to do a quick go back, just real quick. Okay. There's nothing conditional in the promise God made to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't be, if you, if you, if you, right. he just said, this is what I'm going to do. So yeah. that tone is going to be set for scripture. Yep. Quick and note I've... on that is covenants are made by the covenant maker, the superior in the in the party. And God makes the covenant, not Abram. Yeah. And this is, like Greg says, this is a covenant, mm -hmm. borrowing from dad, not a contract. Yes. This is, Abram, listen up. I'm going to do this. You ain't going to stop it. It's going to happen. Okay? Okay. Oh, you're complaining? Not going to work. It's going to happen. It, it is that one, and we will see a little bit later that one sidedness of this covenant coming again and again and again, even through Abram's um, and his family's errors that we see in the future. That's right. That's right. So, more epic foreshadowing. <laughs> that would make such a good tangent, but I will just resist. <laughs> That's a good truth. Yep. All right. So, shall we move on from Egypt to uh, strife? in the um hebrew camp yeah really yeah. quick I do, before we go there really quick i just said hebrew camp this is really important um i think it's because he's the people they're the people of the hebrew that it's abram the hebrew but i'm not seeing it right here right now later we'll see abram and or abraham called a hebrew and I just wanted to draw that up really quick because um, yeah. somebody called him a Jew once and he's not a Jew because he's great granddaddy to Judah from which the Jews came, which is a whole different discussion. But I just wanted to point that out in lineage. This is where the Hebrew comes from. And many contend that Hebrew comes from an ancient word, which means to cross over, yeah. which has to do with their departure, crossing over the Euphrates in obedience to God. Mm -hmm. And every person who responds to God, there's a crossing over and a leaving behind to, to step into that promise that God has made. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Now on to strife in the Hebrew camp. Um, life happening. Abram just got really blessed by the Egyptians. They're back home. They're back uh, in the Negev. You guys, you guys read it as south. Uh, my translation has it as the Negev. Yeah, oh. same thing. Same thing. Yeah, it's a desert region, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Stars. It is now. We don't know <laughs> what it was then. Yeah. It's kind of like you could talk about the South in America, or you could talk about Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, the Kentucky. You know. There you go. It's the South. So what's interesting is the problem they have is because they have so much. Yes. That's right. Right. <clears throat> it's not they're fighting over one piece of bread. They have so much that they don't have place to put everything they have. Yeah. Which um 
You know, it really bugs me after reading that and remembering all the little Christian movies of poor old Abraham living in one tent and he's got just that <laughs> one robe and his chest hair sticking out. This was a wealthy dude. This was a king in a tent. I mean, heck, let's just say let's just say he didn't have hundreds. Let's just say he had a couple dozen animals. That's pretty darn good. That's enough to feed a lot of people. But he got animals from the pharaoh. He got male and female servants. He had so much possessions that the land could not support them. The Negev, a big piece of property. So from that strife that the herdsmen had, the herdsmen, plural, mm -hmm. Abram and Lot sit down and talk. And this is where we pick up. Yeah, yeah. being another action verse, it's hard to talk about. <laughs> Go ahead, Dad. I think uh, you're not. I, I would just point out um, that there was a reset. I think by Abram when he can't, comes back, he he does. It says in verse four, and mm -hmm. there Abram uh, called on the name of the Lord. That was mm -hmm. the place where mm -hmm. um, he he originally built the altar uh on on uh the uh, east east on the mountain uh at at Bethel east of Bethel where, where Bethel was east of the mountain um so there was a reset for Abram and mm -hmm. I, I think honestly um he it affect it 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 he it affects his relationship with lot I mean he is very generous and very gracious mm -hmm. a lot and i don't yeah. think that's a uh just a happenstance i think it's because of god's uh grace to him mm -hmm. um, and he appreciates god's yeah. relationship on that note it's interesting what abram does not do he does not call lot over as an inferior and say, hey, look, at you're a pain in the neck. You're not even supposed to be here. I was trying to be nice to you. Now get out of here. Doesn't do that. Yeah. He's, uh, he, he, I think he has a sense that if God is for you, who can be against you? Uh, yeah. And you do not have to be defending yourself, promoting yourself, and all of this. He gives a lot the choice. Yeah knowing that he is chosen by God. And to me, that is huge. And that is something that I hope I can cultivate in my life rather than trying to benefit myself, promote myself, deal with problems, recognize, God, your hand is upon me mm -hmm. and your blessings are sure. I can relax and trust in you and walk in your ways. You will work it out. Yeah, verses 8 and 9, at least in the text that I've got in my translation, he says, so Abraham said to Lot, please. Yeah. You know, that's not a, a superior speaking down to an no. inferior. No. Please let there be no strife. Then the next uh, verse, 9, please separate from me. You know, so he's, he's trying to yeah. kind of guide him along. Mm -hmm. on what he needs to do and you go that way i'll go this way if you want to go that my way then i'll go the other way which is a good example that what god called abram to do is going to happen anyway yeah yep exactly right mm -hmm. so um a couple notes i kind of want to talk this back to discipleship at some point lot needed to be standing on his own and not underneath abram's um wing um total conjecture but their possessions definitely push them apart another thing i want to bring up is we are actually in the process of teaching our children please and thank yous and it used to be um when people would make you be polite and that's the wrong way to teach politeness is by forcing somebody else to be polite that's not being polite at all so when we're teaching politeness to our children, it is because you respect the other person. We had a an issue where we had to actually have a custodian clean up a mess, and I'm going to leave it there. 
but my children, you know, I told my children, you need to say thank you to him. You need to say thank you to him. He's taking care of a problem for you. Be gracious to him. Say thank you. Respect his time. He doesn't have to be here cleaning this mess. And it is, it, the politeness comes from respect for the other person. God did not come down to Abraham and said, you need to be polite to him, young man. Like he does for uh, Laban later. But uh, it is that it is that respect for the other person that has this. Um, so parents out there, that's why you teach your please and thank yous is so that your kids will have respect. That's why you also practice your please and thank yous with your children is so that you will, you're will you showing them re respect to, I'm off my soapbox. Good word. Yeah. What's interesting is what motivated Lot. Yeah. His eyes. Yeah, right. Yeah, he, he picks what looks, he, he picks the, it's like he's looking over the fruit and seeing, <laughs> okay, it's really luscious looking there. there that's go. that's going to be my part. That'll and the be question is, what what do you see as the motivation for Abram? That's a good question. Well, doesn't doesn't he really? He's letting Lot choose because he yeah. trusts the Lord. Yeah, that's what whatever I Whatever Lot chooses, whatever's left to me, I know you're you're gonna take care of mm -hmm. uh, my flocks, my people, all my servants. Um and he's trusting. Yeah. And that trust is confirmed in verses. 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot separate, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. So that included the direction yes. that Lot went in. It did. Yes, it did. That's great. For all the land which you see, I will give you and your descendants forever. And I'm going to make your descendants like the dust. He repeats that stuff. So rise and walk through the land, for I will give it to you. Mm -hmm. And so again, that just that. Um, if we are gracious in our, in our giving and yielding and not insisting and all that kind of stuff, we're not disadvantaged. We're just not. That makes me think of two things Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. There you go. And then Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be yours as well. Right. And it, mm -hmm. is, it is a simple provision of faith in God. And a whole lot of this God. is, I, I know we know this, trying to make the point though. It's timing. So, you know, the New Testament eventually brings up the fact that Abraham didn't possess everything that God says. He doesn't. No. He, he, he still does it. He will. Yeah. Because God is true to his promises. But, you know, God's timing is perfect. And it's not. It's the vast majority of the time, not ours. The long road. The long road. As, as we see in the future, Abram did have a fear that drove him and that was being childless and so we see it twice here god promising descendants to a childless man who was old um we learn later that sarai was not much younger than him too so this is it, it's not just the land of possession but the fact that he will have um yeah, offspring to possess it yeah but Makes me think of another thought I've been chewing on because it's it's very we look around and we see the next few generations who are being risen up. We see the loud ones. I'm just gonna say that the loud ones. I'm not gonna say all of them, but we see the loud ones. Um as somebody who was born in America. My duty is to not only leave a better country for my offspring, but also to leave better offspring for my country. Very so th th that's the twofold promise I'm seeing here is not only is God giving Abram land and a country, but he's giving him offspring to fill that land and country. And that is 
that's that. And so, so Josh, you hit it. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the mandate in Genesis one? Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Mm -hmm. And and the mandate hasn't changed. And in fact, well, in Christianity, it hasn't it hasn't changed. It has grown, and this is why our number one thing yeah. is go forth and make disciples yeah. because you are supposed to replicate as a follower of jesus you are supposed to make more yeah. followers of jesus so that mandate's still there and i'm bringing it all back should we move on to last thoughts or uh yes okay yeah. i've had two i'm done i'm in i'm i'm gonna feed off of yours there josh you know the Israel results from this whole thing and you get into the time of Jesus and they're saying you know we have Abram as our father and I think it's John the Baptist that said you know God can raise up children to Abraham for these stones as far as the genetic ancestry mm -hmm. and and what God intends Abram's the father of faith and and I think you know, Jesus said, go unto all the world and make disciples. What happens so often in the church is we have our spiritual heroes and we just uh, take the attitude, I say what they say, rather mm -hmm. than entering into the faith of that person that brought them to that point. Mm -hmm. And that's what a disciple does, is carries on in the path of faith from those who have instilled that faith in them. And Abram here is is the father of those who will follow after God by faith. Right. A personal relationship with the living God. Amen. Not a genetic ancestry. Right. Only. Yeah, that well, I'll have a key on that too, just as a final thought. Is that you can't pass on what you don't have. Amen. And so, again, if he's the father of faith, then that faith, same faith must be born in, born in you by a supernatural event, an encounter of some sort with the living God, just like it had with Abraham. And, and then walking, 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 walking through a lot, a whole lot of stuff that that faith can be developed, like James says, you know, if it's unless it's tried, it's you know, you you have no idea whether it's faith or not, whether you got the real stuff or not. Mm -hmm. It has to be tried. Yep, you have to answer the call. Jesus said, "Many are called, but few are chosen." Yep, have to answer the call. And so, uh, in the Gospel of John, doesn't Jesus? speak of uh abraham and knowing abraham mm -hmm. uh, and the uh pharisees um the uh, priests uh scribes he's he's addressing um they um that's one of the points where they they start they pick up stones they want to stone him <laughs> um because he is uh sharing with them that he is the son of God, that he is God. Um, and that, uh, <laughs> anyway, the, the, I think that, that the, um, I think this is just a, a really, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll get into, again, in a week or two, uh, we get into <laughs> the difference between Lot and Abram. Yeah, right. and what happens? That's right. Um, and uh, we we see actually next week we're going to find out um, how um, courageous and um, faithful Abram can be um, in his actions uh, in in even defending and uh, caring for this. Uh, nephew Lot, who's um, gone off uh, separate ways from him. Um, but I, I guess uh, for a final thought here, I, I just think that 
um, it, it seems like we're left with a picture of uh, Abram moving his tent and he's amongst the terebinth trees, the oak trees, and uh, he is settling down um, in this land that um, has been given to him. And he's going to have time to chew on it, to think about it. Mm -hmm. God's promise and God's covenant. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, be a part of what we're doing. Go forth, make disciples, be in a Bible study for yourself. Um, if you've been watching this for a while, you see how much we've gotten out of this discussion. It's your turn. Pure and simple. Make friends, influence others. Hey, that's a book. Also, pray for our, pray for us, pray for each other. We got a few projects. I've got a few projects I'm working on. I don't know about these guys right now, so I can't speak for them. And finally, be a part of what we're doing. Fellowship with us. Like, share, subscribe. Please ask us questions. We'd love to answer them. Uh, make your own comments on this. Let us know what you think. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Talk to you later.